to the fifth episode of New Zealand Water Polo's Inside the Game. Mark Watson with you. Today on the programme, we head stateside and catch up with Wolf Wago, one of the two co-founders of the company Cat7, who provide all the balls for New Zealand Water Polo. And we're going to look at the technology, the innovations, and why their product is cutting edge. But first up, I asked him, in 1999, how the company got established and why. Yeah, you know, we started out, I had uh, my business partner, Brad Schumacher, who is a two-sport Olympian in water polo and swimming, and he was my teammate growing up from when we were kids, and we started doing camps and clinics around the country, um, just going around, teaching young kids the fundamentals of the sport, and slowly we realized we could start to sell uh um, some balls at the clinics and then we started shirts and then we just sort of the business sort of organically grew from there. So really started out just from, from giving back to the sport, making a little money, doing clinics while we were training with the Olympic team. And then it sort of took off from that point. Cap7 has a reputation for being innovative. What are the, some of the products that you've brought to the market that you believe are different that do bring a high level of innovation? We came out with inflatable goal which is really versatile people use it in their backyards they kick around soccer you know football they play with it but also it's great in the pools uh, for the younger kids you're not you know when you're putting it in and taking <clears throat> taking it out you don't have to worry about the floats coming out and a, a hard goal falling on an 11 year old and hitting him in the head which used to happen all the time with the big bigger goals so and then you can put it in a backpack take it down to the beach uh, we make rebounders. We make the stretch bands. Um, we make we made a small heavy ball that. Um, so we made that all the heavy training weight training balls were really big, uh, normal size water polo balls, hard to handle for the weight it was, and we shrunk it down, made it compact. So really, just trying to make the the products that are out there better, and trying to create some new products as well. It's a remarkable story, isn't it? The fact that you've taken water polo products and you've actually designed them so they can be used outside of the pool. And basically it's gym equipment. So you can be so water polo specific in terms of some of the supplementary work that you do. Uh, yeah, so, you know, depending on the product, some of it does and some of it doesn't, but absolutely. absolutely. And a lot of the products we've seen actually in this during this quarantine time, a lot of our products are really useful for when kids don't have a pool and they need to train on land and it can sort of be really versatile. How do you test your product? Who provides you that feedback? Kids, um, but we like to do it ourselves as well. You know, we played and we like to get the, the products. Uh, we go to the trade show, we go to trade shows around the world and see all the sources and see who's making what. And sometimes people will be making a soccer uh, piece of equipment and we'll say, hey, well maybe we can use that for water polo. Um, so that, that happens a lot. And then we'll get, we'll get the samples and we'll test them out. I'll try them. I'll have uh, my kids play water polo so that them and their teammates will try it out. Um, my partner, Brad, also has a water polo club. So we'll have the water polo kids try it out and then keep improving it. And if it's good, just then keep it how it is. Which of your products do you believe has changed the game that everybody else is now starting to copy because you have been ahead of the curve? Uh, well, you know, the ball. Let's start with the ball. Um, we made the ball smaller within the parameters of the, the rules. We, we made the grooves wider. Um, so we've, we've changed the buffing of the grip. We, we made a few changes and everyone started to copy that now is what we've seen as we've seen the other ball manufacturers have made the grip wider. They've made the ball smaller. Um, so as far as that, that really being our marquee product, that's, that's definitely an example. But we have we have a, a smaller skip ball, um, we have a splash ball. Um, we, so there never used to be the smaller size balls for the kids. Um, so we have a, a small, just like a water polo ball, but it's actually like a 1.5 size ball uh, for kids eight and under. So we, want, we really want to what we want to do is really get a push for younger kids to start playing like they do the other some of the other sports where they're starting at six, seven, eight years old. Um, and traditionally water polo kids really don't start until 10 or, you know, 11, 12, and they've missed a time window where they can really start to wire their brains and, and get the, the fundamental skills going uh, that can be important to, to develop as a player. With the innovations that you've brought to the ball, have you noticed 
an innovation that's gone hand in hand with the way the game's perhaps been played. It seemed to me a lot of times uh, when players were faking and they had the ball, sometimes it would just slip out of their hands and it's sort of an accident. And then the ball would turn over and everyone would have to swim to the other end. It seemed to happen too much in our opinion. And um, I've noticed now, now that our ball is, is probably has 95% of the market share in the U S just watching any games from younger kids all the way up to the senior level. It just, people have a better grip on the ball. It's easier to hold it. Um, why make a ball that only the absolute elite athletes can really grab and grip that have huge hands um, make a ball that's more, more accessible to, to the average players. And, and then for the elite players, they can do a lot more fancy fakes, control the ball better. So it really benefits everyone. There's no loser in, uh, in what we've done to the ball. In regards to the ball and its hydrodynamics, aerodynamics, do you do a lot of lab testing? How do you test that product? We are constantly testing new ball designs, new patterns, new grip. Um, so instead of sort of straight lines, wavy lines on the main, on the main grip, um, and then you want to see how the ball skips off the water. That's really important. Some balls will just die, die flat on the water. Some will, will skip too much. So you're changing the materials of the rubber. Um, it can get quite technical with the rubber. Um, and then the grooves, the, 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 the way the grooves work on the ball. There's a lot of different factors into it. And um, we're, we're constantly getting different balls and testing them out and trying to improve even on what we have today. At elite level, players want to play with the ball that they're ultimately going to end up using in big competitions. How much of the market do you have cornered in regards to sponsorship so that there is that flow for the players knowing that, hey, if they practice with a cap seven ball, they are going to get this in tournament play? US, uh, I think we have every contract that's available. So we have all the junior colleges, all the, the NC2A teams, the, the regular colleges. We have the high schools. Um, we have the USA Federation. Um, you name it. We have we we have American water polo. We have USA water polo. Um, we have every every contract slowly, and it didn't happen overnight. Um, you know, it, Macasa used to have every contract, and we got one contract and had success with it, and slowly got more and more. And word of mouth, people started saying, "Hey, this ball's better." People want to play with the best quality ball. Um, and if, if a company is not innovating and it's sort of resting on their laurels and just collecting the paychecks, um, that's when you can make a change in the marketplace. It's an ever-changing world. Is there a lot of room left for further innovation, for future innovation uh, in and around the ball? We are constantly testing new designs. Uh, one sport we really look to is volleyball because when we started out, uh, volleyballs, they had a, tons of different colors, tons of different designs, different panels. And water polo was just one design, only yellow, and you know, quite boring in our opinion. And so now the colors have changed. We've done custom balls with the logos, and we're looking at the different um, different panels, maybe 16 or 12 panels instead of 18. So we're always always looking to change that. Before getting involved with New Zealand water polo, what did you know about New Zealand? Uh, not not too much. Um, we knew it sounded like a great place to go on a holiday and a lot of good beaches and, um, but that's really all we knew. But, but we knew there was some good water polo there. Um, there's been some good players and there's, there's lots of the high school programs, um, have water polo. Uh, so, you know, it was a, it was a good place to, um, get a foothold in and, and promote and, and then myself and my business partner Brad came down and we did some clinics at some of the younger uh, high schools and age group clubs and it was it was a very positive experience and we wanted to grow with that and unfortunately we may not be able to get back down there in the next year or two but we're looking forward to the next available opportunity. In the United States is it the men's water polo team or the women's water polo team has the higher profile? Uh, that's a tough question you know the, the women's team has had so much success the last few olympics so i'd say from a uh, perspective of the media uh, definitely the women's program is a higher profile i mean they've won the olympic gold medal um twice in a row now and they were the favorites heading into tokyo 
the men still have more players playing. Um, and if you watch videos on Instagram of, you know, men's highlights, they're always going to get more, more hits and more views. But I think it's pretty, if you balance it out, it's pretty even in the U S which is unlike some countries. Um, I think there's a few countries where it's all about men's water polo and very little women's water polo. And then there's a few countries where maybe the women's is bigger. Um, I'd say Holland, maybe, um, you know, so as an example of that. We get a lot of American sport here in New Zealand on television and certainly at a college level, NCA double one or division two, very popular. Is there a league beyond that? What is the pathway for American water polo players once they do get out of the collegiate system? Um, no, there, there is a league, but it's not a professional league. So typically, if people are playing in the league in the U.S., they'll have a, a regular job, a full-time job, and then they'll be training as well. And they'll be playing with um, other players in that situation. The players on the national team who still are trying to play in the Olympics are typically all either playing in Europe or sometimes Australia. Um, and some other leagues around the world, but primarily going to Europe is what you would do after college um, if you're looking to keep that highest level possible. Well, Wolf, thank you. It's been a fascinating uh, look inside your company, Cap7, and the manufacturing of that wonderful Cap7 ball. And I do encourage people, next time you pick up a Cap7 water polo ball, you might hopefully look at it and think of it a bit differently and all the intellectual property that's gone into it and the thought behind it to make this game more accessible and to allow this game to be played with maybe just a little bit more ease. I do encourage people to check out their website. That is www.cap7.com.